Hi folks, so in the last video I did, I talked about the fact that we were dealing with transits right now through the end of this last weekend, and I would say till the close of till till the close of today, Monday, the 26th of June, where we're dealing with a set of transits that were that were challenging in nature, and I kind of categorized another set of challenges is positive in nature. And the last video I did two days ago, two or three days ago, was focusing on the ones that were challenging in nature. And today I'm going to do the ones, one about the ones that are positive in nature. But on reflecting, I have to say, I don't know really which is positive and which is negative. We had a new moon in Gemini a little over a week ago. And at the, that new moon was square Neptune. And at the time of the new moon, one of the major transits that was encoded into that new moon was also Mars squaring Uranus. Mars in Leo, Uranus in Taurus. And that is occurring today or has occurred today. I don't know what time today it actually occurred, but on the 26th. So the 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 the, the opportunity with those transits is to create a clearing around energies that have felt deceptive or where either goals have had to be pursued or lines have had to be drawn or boundary, boundaries have had to be drawn or you have simply needed to choose to disengage from energies that feel that feel like you yeah, around energies around people who are not being honest or straightforward with you, right? That's the classic sort of Neptunian deceit, gaslighting, theft, loss, trap. You know, um, the agendas are not clear, and it, there's a kind of a smoke and mirrors and foggy quality to it. Now, Neptune can also stand for spirituality, intense spirituality, renunciation. Neptune can stand for um, uh, 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 intense creativity and inspiration um, when it comes to um, creative tasks and activities, music, you know, that kind of foggy, non-3D space from which ideas and visions arise. Um, there's a loss of groundedness or connection to what I will call reality. And, and so you can get these kind of fantastical, uh, wonderful, inspired um, ideas, notions from a spiritual perspective. It is the ultimate. I'm going to give it all up and I'm going to choose to lose what I need to lose in order to really search for and find and feel a connection with spirit and, and, and the divine. But on a on a much more real day-to-day -day basis, we will feel Neptune's energy as a part of the chart where we are experiencing loss and a sublimation of ego and a recognition that things that we're holding on to are being forced to dissolve attachment in that part of the chart because um, it, because um, the, the nature of the loss is such that there's a, there's a kind of a, you have to deal with the fact that what you expected to be yours or belong to you or you know, is 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 going to dissolve, and often that gets dissolved through. It's it's a way for the universe to say, well, nothing is really yours, and you didn't come in with anything, and you're not not going to leave with anything. So really, it's kind of like for how you know what 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 sort of possessiveness are we talking about? But these kinds of things are often achieved through in the 3D through deceptive realms and means, and that does not mean that in certain cases you shouldn't have boundaries. You should. There's just something about Neptunian loss that feels like you're kind of, you've got to figure out how to, you've got to figure out how to fight what it is that you need to fight with the right type of resources. And as I said in my last video, I'm not advocating that you take anything into your own hands. If it is a really challenging situation that requires third party expertise, whether it is legal help or law enforcement or medical help, um, then that is what you should be getting as opposed to just kind of going in there and fighting with people uh, in a way that may, may lead to even more loss as opposed to less. So irrespective, I will, I will leave that to each of you. And if any of this resonates or feels useful, you can look at that last video. The point I was trying to make was the opportunity with this new moon that has challenging aspects around it, as challenging or negative as it might seem, the opportunity to create a clearance is actually a really positive thing. The opportunity to disengage, which is what I said in my last video, to find ways to disengage, um, whatever that word means to you, or to end what needs to be ended, or to separate yourself or distance yourself from things that are murky so that you can create a clearing for something much more positive 
much more genuine, much more aligned with your values and expectations, which also means that you show up um, mirroring and expressing and living out those values. You know, one of the things to always question and think about is if you are attracting certain energies in a certain part of your chart and they're challenging or deceptive, then what is it, and if they're not measuring up to your values, are you in any way also not measuring up to your values? It's, it's, a, it's a challenging question to ask, but it's an important question to ask with regard to where things are at vibrationally. Now, ironically, I may refer to what I want to talk about today as there are two things I want to talk about today that are centered around the date of June 19th and the week before and week after June 19th. And those of you who've been watching my videos have guessed where I'm going with this probably. And today is the 26th, and I'm going to count today as the week after June 19th coming to an end. So I would encourage you to look at, in one case, the last week, and in another case, the last two weeks. Now, even though in my mind, as I look at this, this is a, these are more positive developments, and I have to say, again, I'm talking about the eclipses, and specifically I'm talking about the Aries solar eclipse that happened on April the 19th, as I've said to you, two months after a solar eclipse, June the 19th, the week before, week after, for me, carries eclipsy energy, change, meditation on change, talking about change, eclipsy occurrences, sudden, powerful shifts. It may not be sudden, but when the shifts happen. So in the last video, I talked about foundations having cracks. Well, these past two weeks are when some development could happen around those. One of the pillars could collapse, so the entire building could collapse, or something could happen that jolts you into. And with eclipses, we have to believe that in most of our cases, that ultimately the forces are working for our advantage. And you kind of need eclipses and eclipsy energy to get you out of the inertia of moving on a wheel that you want to get off of but can't. So whether it is a static inertia that requires you to move or whether you're moving on a day-to-day -day basis but can't get quite get off of a particular cycle, you need that eclipse energy to something to happen, possibly external, that, that helps create change to bring in something better and more suitable for yourself or to propel you towards better opportunities or greater authenticity. The eclipses, of course, are happening, the, this solar eclipse happening in the Aries part of your chart, so that is what I would look to. What house does Aries occupy? What does that house stand for? But these last two weeks, you know, n worth it to think about. And again, with eclipses, mortality, the veil between this world and the next world thinning, whether it sometimes has to do with news with our own health or mortality or other people's health or mortality or developments or even them passing on or transitioning, all of that can... Um, increase in frequency, let's just say, um, the awareness around it can increase, but also other kind of changes, jolts, um, something very uncomfortable around these last couple of weeks around this. Now, I consider this positive, but again, you know, I'm, I'm, I started this video by saying the idea that something that is a challenging transit is going to be negative and a, the idea that something positive that, you know, eclipses are not, in a lot of traditions, are not considered positive things. In fact, as far as traditional astrology is concerned, unless you are rolling in money and have leisure time and have wealth and abundance and, a, you know, that is what is considered good or positive and anything else is considered challenging. And again, even that, you know, without resistance or the need to work out your brain or your body or, you know, we all sort of become... Well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go down that path. What is good or bad, I'm going to let you interpret with regard to if it's a challenging transit, if it actually affords you the opportunity to create, to deal with something, to create a positive space, wonderful. If it is a seemingly um, whatever, whatever type of transit, if it allows you to do that, wonderful. Um, with the last couple of weeks, with the fact that it is two months after that eclipse, I would watch out for that energy that kind of has a, I would reflect on over the past two weeks what is it that came up that propels you forward, requires you to lean into the Aries part of your chart? And it doesn't have to come to fruition, but have there been developments of the past two weeks that are propelling you forward in that direction? By the time we now get into this next phase that takes us between eclipse energies, the next eclipse that I am concerned about uh, for the purpose of this particular conversation is on October the 28th in Taurus. So we had a solar eclipse in Aries. We have a corresponding lunar eclipse in Taurus on October the 28th. So August the 28th, the week before and after, two months before that lunar eclipse is when we 
get our next set of eclipsy jolts or when we might experience the, the, the Taurus eclipse itself for some people. And so this time period we have between now and August the 28th, it's a two month time period, is in some ways when the jolts have happened and the pieces kind of fall to the floor. And you know, the next full moon in a week's time, the Capricorn full moon, has some positive, and that I will say is just unalloyed positivity, one of the transits that, that it is making, that full moon is making, as, as a positivity towards it. But again, you know, if, 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 it is, if it is trying Uranus and Taurus, Uranus requiring sudden changes and sudden, again, how you experience that positivity, you know, could, it, could a layoff be a positive thing for some people or could an ending of something be a positive thing to create that quantum leap, new beginning, authentic new beginning in the Taurus part of your chart supported by the Capricorn part of your chart? It could be. How things show up and whether they're negative or positive is different. But, but it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's still, if I were to talk in terms of positives and negatives, it is a more positive full moon than this last Gemini new moon. But the Cancer new moon three weeks from now, wow. You know, that is that is an intense, that is a throwdown of a challenge. And it it I would encourage you to think about this time period through August the 28th as a time when the jolts and the earthquakes that had to collapse things have kind of occurred and the pieces on the floor. And so we might in over the next couple of months be in a place where we're having to pick things up and figure out who we are and which direction we want to move in and start to take some actions and all that and then Venus is going to go retrograde in about a month's time. I will cover this in upcoming transits but it's a it's a way of saying um, it's a way of, the second half of this year is choppy really and 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 we're starting to make our entrance into that from a calendar perspective and also from an astrological perspective. But Again, the first of the two transits I want to talk about today, if I can call them transits, is the fact that we had two months after the Aries solar eclipse on June 19th, so the week before and week after, might have, and it's worth looking back over the past couple of weeks and seeing what is it, what, what is, is there something that has propelled you forward or is propelling you forward or is creating a kind of eclipsy forward movement. Um, and some of it might feel like some of the energy clearing that you've had to do related to the people in the Gemini part of your chart and affecting whatever losses being created or a Neptunian foggy deceptive energies being created in the Pisces part of your chart. That may feel like a bit of a jolt in the way that you have to deal with it. Um, even through today and yesterday, because yesterday we had Mercury squaring Neptune and today we've had Mars squaring Uranus, but also from a general eclipse in which direction to move in. And that's why I feel like these eclipses have a positivity towards them because with some of when we're dealing with transits where we're clearing de deceptive, it's helpful to have a forward. This is where you're going. So clear the energies you need to clear that are draining you. And in that regard, insofar as this is giving you that through line of this is where you need to go and this is where you're going, I see that as the positive, and I see the dealing with the deceptive energies as a negative. Although in dealing with it, you create the positive space and what it is that moving you forward can occur in ways that are jolting and jarring and require you to get into action in some way or prepare to get into action in some way. Okay. The second thing I wanted to mention as far as the 19th is concerned, June the 19th is the date when Venus entered the degrees, entered her shadow period. Venus goes retrograde on July the 23rd, I believe. July the 22nd or 23rd, depending on where you are. So 12 degrees of Leo is where the shadow period starts. So Venus entered that on the 19th. So between the 19th and the 22nd, 19th of June and the 22nd of July, is when Venus will go over that shadow period. She will go retrograde on the 22nd of July and be retrograde till September the 3rd. Then she will go direct on September the 3rd and on October the 7th, clear the retrograde area. So the degrees between 12 degrees of Leo and 29 degrees of Leo are where Venus is going to go over three times. Forward, retrograde on July 22nd, direct on September the 3rd, and after October the 7th, clearing that 29th degree of Leo. So what aspects does Venus make in your chart between 12 and 29 degrees of Leo that she's going to make three times. Does she conjunct anything in your natal chart in Leo? Does she square? Does she trine? Does she oppose? Worth and 
I'll talk about the Venus retrograde in greater details. The, the most interesting thing to me about this Venus retrograde is that she gets closer and closer to Mars, closer and closer and closer, slows down, Mars starts to separate, she goes retrograde. So the thing that is imminent and wants to happen is not going to happen till next January, February in the sign of Aquarius, Leo's opposite sign, when Venus and Mars will finally conjunct in Aquarius. I find that fascinating. I find this Venus-Mars conjunction, the birthing of something, creativity, even romance. The three-letter word that begins with an S and ends with an X, duality, passion, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, so um, passion, or the creative urge, the creative romantic spirit, you know, making things happen, uniting the masculine and the feminine principles within ourselves and within our environment to birth and to create something, to love something into being. Um, about to happen, and then Venus goes, wait, 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 wait. I am not in the right place. Something's not right. What do I value? What do you value? What do we value? And let's reflect on making sure that everything, particularly our finances and relationships, are in alignment with that while I am retrograde. And while Venus is retrograde, financial tightness is the biggest and most common thing that we experience. July 22nd to September 3rd. So by the time you head to about July 15th, 18th, just, you know, so over the next two or three weeks, if you need to think in terms of conservation of resources, and if you need to start to think about where are my expenses going and what are my values and where am I spending money and is my expenditure supporting my goals and my values or is it draining it? Am I having to work extra hard to pay these bills that I don't really care about, these subscriptions and these this and these that, or are my resources and are my expenses actually contributing to, are they the chariot on which I am proceeding towards my goals? Or is that the chariot that's leading me in a different direction and I am, you know, that's one of the significant things about what do I value, what are my goals, and are my finances and my relationships in alignment with, and activities to some extent, but, 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 but is my life in alignment with, with what I value and what are my values and how do I value myself? Am I important enough to myself? Is my sense of self-worth important enough that I will deal with this alignment? The retrograde Venus will force you to learn the lessons that you need to learn as far as especially financially and in terms of relationships. Okay. But June the 19th is when that shadow period started. So I would encourage you to think about what has been going on over the last week to some extent and to continue to reflect as you head towards July the 22nd of what is it that comes up between June the 19th and July 22nd, particularly financially and in terms of relationships, romantic relationships, all relationships, sense of harmony, sense of cooperation, sense of worth in relationships, you know, self-worth in relationships, relationships and finances. I, oh, that's all I need to say. I really don't need to write an essay on this. Um, start reflecting and seeing what it is that comes up because it may be that there are a couple of go-overs on this. Uh, reviewing and reevaluating, be becoming really strong between July 22nd and September 3rd, and after September 3rd to October 7th, a kind of a clearing of that energy and a resolution of that energy. And a resolution does not mean always coming together. It can mean splitting apart. It does not. Or it can just mean a new, it can mean a thesis, antithesis, and a synthesis that's going to become a thesis again, for lack of a different way of putting it. You know, something is a certain way, you want things to be a certain way, there's a new way in which perhaps if it's a challenging relationship, you've chosen to disengage, but there's a new way of relating that then aligns better with your values and keeps things at an appropriate distance with the appropriate boundaries. Or in certain cases, it encourages coming together in an even tighter way and an even better and healthier and closer way. Or in certain cases, there's a dissolution. You know, uh, the, the financial part is a different type of thinking about things and just, just, Keep the balance sheet in mind and where is your money going and what is your approach to it and is it aligned with what you're trying to do? I, if you get on that horse now, it will save you. You'll have about three weeks of a heads up to be thinking on those lines. I'm going to leave it at this. I hope you found this useful. After today, for the next week, some of the transits become a little gentler and and we'll talk more about that as we, as we move forward towards the full moon in Capricorn. But I hope you found it useful. Comment, like, Subscribe, click on the bell icon next to the subscribe button, the wiggly one on top so that you're notified when I do new videos. 
Uh, you're welcome to do all that kind of stuff. Tell your friends about the channel if you find it useful. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, I will see you when I do my next video. Thank you so much. And for people who comment and support, thank you. I am so grateful. Take care.